Bruno, what are you doing here in the park so late? Are you lost? <laughs> That's funny. Of course not. I'm just walking. I didn't know you liked to walk in the park in the evenings. That's great. <laughs> Why do you say that? What's wrong with walking in the park at night? No, there is nothing wrong. It's just that I always thought you were a little scared. Me? <laughs> of course not. I am not afraid of anything, bro. <laughs> well, if you say so, but you sure have a phobia, right? Everyone has one. No way. I'm telling you, I'm not afraid of anything. No phobias. Mm, let's see. What about claustrophobia? It's fear of enclosed spaces. People with this fear say they feel like the walls are closing on them. Some theories suggest there is a genetic link to specific phobias as a kind of dormant survival mechanism. <laughs> sure, but that's not my case. I don't have claustrophobia. Mm, then what about entomophobia? Fear of insects. They are small, they crawl, and they often bite, so it is understandable why many people do not like spiders and insects. But they are a crucial link in the food chain, and we cannot live without them. It's okay if you feel afraid of spiders or any other kind of insect. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm not afraid of insects. I absolutely don't have entomophobia. Mm -hmm. Then what about ophidiophobia? That's fear of snakes. Indiana Jones famously quipped, I hate snakes. And he's not alone. A fear of all things long and venomous is common to many. Seriously. The great thing about snakes is that if you leave them alone, they will leave you alone. Again, I'm not afraid of snakes or spiders. I am not afraid of anything, that's all. Yeah, I see. And what about aerophobia? Or the fear of flying? It affects between 10 and 40% of people. That's a significant number. I mean, despite the fact that airplane accidents are actually very uncommon, Around one out of every three people have some level of fear of flying. Some of the common symptoms associated with this phobia include trembling, rapid heartbeat, and feeling disoriented. But what else? The fear of flying sometimes causes people to avoid flying altogether. It is often treated using exposure therapy, in which the person is gradually and progressively introduced to flying. They imagine they're flying. 
you don't have to be ashamed of having that fear of flying. Seriously. <laughs> I'm not afraid of flying. I like traveling by airplanes. Mm, okay, then xenophobia. It's the fear of dogs. You have it, right? It's often associated with specific personal experiences, such as being bitten by a dog during childhood. Such events can be quite traumatic and can lead to fear responses that last well into adulthood. This particular phobia can be quite common. You might feel unable to walk down a certain street because you know that there is a dog living in that neighborhood. Um, yeah. <laughs> This avoidance can impact your ability to function in your daily life. Poor of you. I remember a dog bit you when we were playing in a park when we were children. Remember? <laughs> it was a long time ago. And no, I'm not afraid of dogs. That's crazy. <laughs> Oh, I know. Trypanophobia. Yeah, how did I not think of that before? It's the fear of injections, a condition that can sometimes cause people to avoid medical treatments and doctors. Like many phobias, this fear often goes untreated because people avoid the triggering object and situation. Estimates suggest that as many as 20 or 30% of adults are affected by this type of phobia. When people with this phobia do have to have an injection, they may experience feelings of extreme dread and elevated heart rate leading up to the procedure. Some people even pass out during the injection. I know it sounds crazy, but it's real. People with this phobia sometimes avoid doctors, dentists, and other medical professionals when they have some type of physical or dental ailment that needs attention. You never liked to go to the doctor, I remember. Maybe you have triponophobia. Are you done? I told you, I am not afraid of anything, Ro. Stop it. Then you have social phobia. It involves the fear of social situations. In many cases, these phobias can become so severe that people avoid events, places, and people who are likely to trigger an anxiety attack. It's serious. People with this phobia fear being watched or humiliated in front of others. Even ordinary, everyday tasks such as eating a meal can be anxiety provoking. Social phobias often develop during poverty and can last throughout life unless they are treated. Do you remember when we used to have expositions in the school? Hmm? Do you remember? You never wanted to present our project. You were afraid of speaking in front of the others. Maybe you have that disorder and you don't know that. Be careful. Again, I am not afraid of anything, bro. Stop it now.
I have to go home. Okay, okay. I believe you. I'm sorry for telling you half a phobia. Well then, why don't we go home and practice English? We have an exam tomorrow. Can you present the project, please? You need to speak in English for at least 10 minutes. What? Learning English? No, 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 no! Xenoglossophobia is literally the fear of speaking a foreign language. A language learning phobia. So it sounds like mild anxiety. It does exist in extreme forms. Traumatic events can even make things worse, probably when you were at the school. Did you have the unfortunate experience of being ridiculed for making a mistake? This makes it more likely you will be nervous in the future. Maybe you have it and you didn't know it. Happily, we have some videos on how to overcome fear of speaking in English. Or if you want a specific video on how to fight the noglossophobia, just let me know. I hope you liked this conversation. If you could improve your English a little more, please subscribe to the channel and share this video with a friend. And if you want to support this channel, you can join us or click on the super thanks button. Thank you very much for your support. Take care.